Coronavirus has given way to a lot of misinformation and fake news. According to a recent study published by an American journal, it says more than 800 people lost their lives due to misinformation and fake news related to coronavirus. Now, speaking of which, we have a very important guest with us today, Mr. Govindraj Ethiraj, who's a journalist and an entrepreneur. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time and speaking to My us. My pleasure. Mr. Ethiraj has started India's first data journalism initiative, ladies and gentlemen. It's called the India Spend. He's also co-founded two other media organizations called the Fact Checker and Boom. Now, I'd like to begin by asking, sir, how, at a time like coronavirus, how vulnerable are people to fake news and misinformation that they come across on social media? Yeah, uh, thanks for uh, having me, uh, Navya. So uh, I think people have been, people are vulnerable in general because that's the nature of media, that's the nature of uh, information dissemination and the pace at which information is disseminated, whether it's information or disinformation. I yeah. think in the case of COVID specifically, it's been clear right from the beginning that uh, that uh, there is, uh, you know, let me take a step back first. You know, in, in medicine in general, there, is, there are always conditions, disease conditions, issues which are either don't have cure or don't have easy cures. Yes. Uh, cancer is the most obvious one. So if you look at the misinformation around cancer uh, that has been circulating for the last few years that we are aware of, including on social platforms, Mm -hmm. It's very clear that people gravitate to solutions because somewhere within themselves, they are desperate for a solution. So yes. for instance, let's say, uh, unfortunately, uh, one of us uh, in our family has is suffering from cancer and we've tried all the known treatments, which is allopathic and so on. And you're reaching a point where you're desperate. And if some, suddenly you get a message on your inbox, which says that, oh, there's mm -hmm. a doctor in Bangalore who's found, uh, found an Ayurvedic cure for cancer. Now, even if you're the most rational person, uh, about uh, to, uh, about medical choices, you will still want to pursue it. Absolutely. So, uh, so it's it's really it's to do with human nature, yeah. and uh, the more uh, weak, uh, uh, the I mean uh, the more uh, let's say the uh, the more dangerous the condition is. I'm talking about medicine in this case. The more it exploits weak human nature, Absolutely. and uh, or uh, helplessness. Uh, which is really the common threat. So now let's come to COVID specifically. So even the World Health Organization has said that this is an infodemic apart from just being a pandemic. So uh, what are the key kinds of misinformation around? They're obviously to do with uh, either treatments or uh, preventions or cures. Yes. Uh, uh, treatment, prevention, cure and vaccine, of course. Vaccine comes a little later. Hmm. So um, now obviously a lot of people feel that, uh, you know, uh, if I take a certain kind of medicine or if I take a certain kind of... Uh, let's say traditional cure or the traditional, uh, let's say uh, preparation, then I will be cured. So now what happens is in the case of a disease like COVID, now COVID doesn't uh, have the same impact on anyone or, and, and on everyone. 80% of people, maybe nothing will happen yes. uh, or 90% nothing will happen. 10% will get affected. Of that 10%, maybe five or 6% also will have suffer from moderate to uh, moderate to moderate severe or mild to moderate to severe symptoms and then uh, recover. Yes. And there'll be a small percentage uh, who will definitely uh, not make it. And maybe those uh, small percentage will be older, male, already suffering mm -hmm. from some form mm -hmm. morbidities and so on. But the fact is that it is a lethal disease. There's no doubt about it. And, and it's also a fact that we, I, we don't have a cure or uh, nor do we have a vaccine. So we are searching for it. So in such a, such a situation, what happens is that uh, as people start, uh, you know, circulating stuff that they either come across or someone has told them, then the propensity to believe for the same reasons that I mentioned earlier is high. So if you look at cancer, what, what, I mean, what is the big uh, thing about cancer? That it's essentially mostly uncurable, yes. right? Uh, there are people who uh, contract cancer uh, and, uh, and uh, or suffer from cancer and recover. Hmm. But there are cases clearly where people die. Yes. And, uh, and you know, which is what we call terminal, uh, terminal, uh, which is why we call it a terminal disease. So similarly, it's like COVID. COVID, I mean, rather COVID is like cancer and there are other conditions as well. So, so all of that creates the ecosystem for uh, high speed uh, dissemination of misinformation and more importantly, our believing of it. So I think that's the, the fundamental problem. Uh, the last example I would use is vaccines. Uh, you can yes. see, not, not vaccine for COVID, but vaccine in general, where you can see that uh, people have uh, taken uh, vaccines, but uh, I mean, people 
have become suspicious about vaccines people have uh, started uh, questioning whether those vaccines are good for their children mm. and not taking it mm. uh, and also causing harm because of that to not them just themselves but even to their communities Definitely. and it's all because uh, uh, largely because of unproven myths and unsubstantiated uh, claims about uh, some harm that it does or some damage does it does so when we talk about covid we have to keep in mind that it's a larger problem with the entire health and medicine ecosystem of information uh, that we are fighting absolutely sir i think you made a very important point here that people in desperate times are you know vulnerable to falling for fake news and misinformation now sir do you think social media platforms have become factories of fake news and if so how big is this threat for social media users so i won't say the social media platforms are factories because factories are those who manufacture yeah. uh, social media platforms disseminate or help dissemination and distribution factories are finally uh, run by people like you and me those mm. who create fake news at source are uh, people like you and me doing it for whatever reason they may do right. it deliberately because they want to create panic in uh, depending on what the subject is or they want to do it genuinely i want to send uh, uh you know i came across this interesting article which talks about this amazing cure which i sent to you as my friend right. because i want i genuinely uh, feel for your well being but you in turn forwarded it to maybe five other people and mm. by the end of the week a million people have got it yes. and it, this yes. is something that's unsubstantiated uh, it could be health and medicine it could be finance it could be uh, communal political or social but uh, i won't say that i mean so but i think the people are the creators of misinformation not uh, platforms or uh, or tech platforms right so in the recent past a lot of eminent journalists and politicians have fallen for fake news and misinformation and also in the rush to you know be, be the first one to report when it comes to journalists a lot of us have fallen for uh, fake news or misinformation or unverified uh, information so do you think uh, knowledge or familiarity with fake news has not you know does not have anything to do with preventing from falling for it or spreading it be it you know people from any walk of life so i think my our hope always is that when you fall for something it's something new mm. as in you don't fall for the same thing again and uh, in general you are more cautious today than before that's right. assuming you're a lay consumer now there are other people who benefit from doing all this so i'm not talking about those right. but in general uh, the hope is that you know you are getting more informed uh, as you uh, as time progresses whether it's on covid-19 specifically or in general and you are more skeptical about things that are coming into your inboxes uh, but uh, i mean my my sense is that unless someone is doing it uh, deliberately then usually they've learned uh, or at least definitely become one notch more careful than they were earlier right. including people in public life right as i mentioned earlier so a lot of people lost their lives due to uh, fake news close to 800 people across the world and this is just a rough figure that we're talking about yeah. here and do you think there are any measures that the authorities or the officials can adopt to tackle this situation because now this has definitely uh, gone out of our hands so uh, i think so there is a public health problem uh, which is that uh, obviously people have not taken treatment in time or have tried to self administer or taken the wrong treatment and which is why mm. maybe they have uh, uh, this number has emerged right. the the solution is two things i mean one is that uh, people have to be made aware that they need to take treatment they need to visit a physician they need to get expert uh, expert medical advice rather than try and uh, do self uh, diagnosis and self administration of medicine which a lot of people do uh, and and they may they may survive and they may get away with it as well which mm. what which is what gives them the confidence to start circulating it not knowing that i mean your physiognomy is different from mine yes. and uh, you may dif- react quite differently uh, or not react at all to something that i am reacting to when which mm. is why people mm. visit because they know understand our bodies yes. better than we do so um um i i don't know if that answers your question i think the 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 way information is shared is um you know if 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 let's say the government takes on the role okay mm. and the government does take on this role of saying that uh, you should not believe this 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 but you are limiting it to let's say medical uh, medicine and medical advice mm. you're not necessarily changing my outlook on right. the concept i mean or the fundamental concept which is that i should question everything that i come across right so 
if a government, uh, whether at the central level, it, these are things better run at a local level, right? It's whether uh, it's your local municipal corporation, which sort of you're exposed to, uh, which is in a better position to manage information or conduct campaigns and so on. So I would think that these things have to be fought on a twin basis. I mean, you know, so you have to tell people to develop critical thinking, you know, to question, to not believe anything and everything they come across. So that's one. Absolutely. Equally at the time of a uh, COVID crisis, uh, any uh, local authority or body has to, or even at the central level, I mean, we've done it in the past. Uh, when we ran, we've done national campaigns for AIDS, hmm. uh, tuberculosis, leprosy, hmm. and so on. So. And the other thing is to have specific targeting. Say that, okay, uh, do not, uh, uh, you know, do not go into crowds with our, uh, do not uh, spend time in crowds. Always wear a mask. Always uh, wash your hands and sanitize uh, frequently. So that kind of messaging combined with a sense that, combined with another set of messaging which says that, you know, be always uh, wary or skeptical about what you see is how it would work, I think. Uh, you know, one without the other, I don't know. I mean, but in general, the larger problem is that people are not looking at information critically. You know, yes. uh, I mean, we learn this in school that, you know, what do you trust and what do you not trust? What is a source? What is not a source? And I think, unfortunately, in the digital world, we have to relearn and revisit all of these things. Absolutely. So this was talking about the government's role or the authority's role. Now, many social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp, they've launched features that help the you know social media users identify fake news and not forward it to other people and a lot of other features to debunk myths and fake news or hoax news. Now, how effective do you think these features can be for the social media users or the general public in combating the infodemic? So I'm uh, so I'm familiar a little with Google and what they've right. been doing on YouTube. So they are constantly like today, if, if you go just now on Google and say COVID something, uh, the first page, the, the results it will show you will be about the data and it will also uh, link you to all the resources yes. that are available, which are all official resources for every country. Mm. So for India, it will be Indian Council of Medical Research, uh, Ministry of Health and so on. And similarly, in other countries, the equivalent of that. So, yes. so the sense I'm getting is uh, that platforms are uh, directing you where possible uh, to genuine sources and trying to keep out uh, non-genuine sources or uh, sources which are uh, which don't have the authenticity hmm. or, the, uh, or are not known for verified information. So I think that's, I mean, I, I know Google have, have been watching or YouTube for that matter, I think uh, more carefully. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't know what exactly happens on Facebook, but uh, Google as, as a user, like all of us uh, is doing that and, um, and yeah, I'll, I mean, I want to limit mine to what I know. So I mean, I think, right. but this is an evolving thing equally. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so where the questions that people ask uh, are also getting sharper, different and all that. So uh, platforms have a responsibility to ensure that uh, the search results that they throw up are constantly aligned to what people are asking and what the medical developments are, or, uh, you know, the verified medical developments are. Right. Absolutely, sir. So during the COVID crisis, as we speak, a lot of misinformation and fake news are continuously making way to human lives and habits. Now, with this excess information, just to simplify, how does one identify or differentiate between what is true and what is false for the general public to know? I think that's it's a tough question. So the thing is, I would always say that, uh, you know, uh, track boomlive.in because we are constantly uh, in turn looking at things yes. and uh, debunking. We've, uh, I mean, we've got uh, people who are specialized at this. Uh, we've built the connections as in, uh, you know, others know that we are checking. So for instance, the, a lot of people in the medical fraternity know that we are constantly checking and we're reaching out to them to do that. You mm. know, checking is not, this is not a tech job. It's a physical job because you have to verify physically with real people. Yes. Uh, similarly, uh, I mean, my, my, our own colleague uh, who leads this effort is a uh, master's in public health. Uh, her name is Shachi. So she, for instance, focuses on, uh, mm. has been doing it. Right. I mean, she, she has been there before COVID. So, so there is a certain expertise we bring uh, in the way we do it. And maybe others are too. So that is one. Uh, the other is to develop uh, in, this is goes for overall misinformation, is to develop highly specialized sources. So for instance, if you have the appetite, I mean, I would say, follow uh, sources like uh, uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, you know, and their social media, uh, Cleveland Clinic, uh, maybe the Indian Council of Medical Research, Tata Memorial Hospital. 
so follow sources where you know that uh, there are experts who know the subject and will not uh, will be up themselves up to date on what is happening see the one thing you have to know and we all have to acknowledge in the case of covid is that this is an evolving uh, disease true uh, there are, as we know there's no cure and there's no vaccine but equally our understanding is constantly changing and improving hmm. you know what we knew even in the month of april is quite different from what we know what in the we month know. of april. absolutely in terms of the way the disease uh, attacks progresses and the residual effects it has on uh, on people even those who recover hmm. right so my last question would be what is your expectation from the stakeholders the media in general and the people in fighting this infodemic because a lot of as you mentioned a lot of general public don't have access to the sources or you know the proper websites or the proper news media organizations who are involved in fact checking the facts or the information that general public comes across yeah. so what is the I mean, basic it's step a, that you yeah, want to find it's tough to be prescriptive in this because uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I, what I would want to say is that I come back to the same thing. Develop a few very trustworthy sources. I mm -hmm. know that eventually most people form sources that they like to believe rather than yes. uh, have verified for themselves yes. uh, to be accurate. But this is this is this is lives we are playing with. Uh, this is not just a matter of opinion on some uh, uh, you know sort of abstract subject. So therefore, uh, my only suggestion would be follow. Uh, uh, a couple of maybe media organizations uh, who are known to be objectively this for reporting on this issue uh, for sure follow boomlive.in because we are putting a lot of effort in uh, uh, in what we are doing here and uh, in general uh, develop uh, a critical approach to everything that you come across and uh, in terms of your thought and not believe anything at first sight or forward it which is worse yes Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, sir, for taking our time and speaking to us. I'm sure people now understand how important it is to identify the correct source of news and also cross-check it before they forward it. Thank you so My much. My pleasure, Navya. Thank you very much for reaching out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.